This segment is sponsored by Our Home Magazine. Richmond's Glave and Homes Architecture is celebrating 50 years of work. Our next guest wrote a coffee table book to commemorate this very important milestone. We welcome Randy Holmes to Virginia this morning. He's senior partner and president of Glave and Homes Architecture. Good to see you, Randy. Good to be here. Thank you. This is a big, big event, 50 years uh, for an architecture firm that has made a difference in the way Richmond looks. And of course, this book has got to be very exciting. I know that you started working on this a while ago. How many man hours have you put into this? <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to count. Yeah, I'll say count. it's a labor of love, though. Labor yeah. of love. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the very beginning of the, the firm. You weren't with them in the very beginning. And uh, there was a choice made on what kind of architecture to do. Um, did that work out pretty good, I'm guessing? It did. Uh, Jim Glave, Jim Glave, Bill Newman, and Pete Anderson started the firm uh, back in the 60s, and they started with a passion for uh, saving old buildings, keeping historic uh, structures. Uh, a lot of our buildings in, in Chaco Bottom, down along Main Street, uh, are here today with us in Richmond because of those efforts. Um, there are even pictures of uh, the firm protesting in front of the uh, Virginia Planners Bank building to try to save that building. And so that was a bit different in the 60s and 70s when many people were advocating to tear down and take away these older structures and to make room for new buildings. But Jim believed that some of these buildings were worth um, holding on to and saving and, and uh, preserving. And so that laid a foundation for the firm that we've held on today. We, we think that sometimes uh, buildings that from the past have a lot to give to us in the way of character and placemaking, so we try to restore and save, save them. You know, restoring and, and saving old buildings is, is kind of uh, a, a really special part of our history. I remember a protest about uh, paving over the, uh, the brick pavers on Monument Avenue. And nice. at the time, it's like, who cares? You know, it's kind of a bumpy ride. Now, you can't imagine <laughs> that somebody would have just thrown that away and, and pulled all those up and paved over them. And I'm guessing the same kind of feeling happens for some of these buildings you saved just to look at it now and go, what idiot would tear that down? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're buildings that we love and cherish in Richmond and, um, you know, little to no, for example, Union Presbyterian Seminary was going to tear down all the buildings on their campus at one point and build new. Wow. And Jim Glave at the last minute came in and said, wait a minute, we can show you how you can accomplish your goals for advancement and improvement while keeping these buildings. And they listened. And um, that seminary, as it exists today, um, is there in large measure because of Jim's influence on the board. That's, that's, that's a great example because, again, you ride by there and you look at these beautiful buildings. You can't imagine somebody would have just torn them down and put a box up instead. So, yeah, that's, that's a big difference. Let's talk a little bit about the book. What, when we get the book, what are we going to find? Well, in the beginning, we share a bit about the history of the firm and, and how we um, came to be uh, Glave and Holmes Architecture. Uh, I say we stand on the shoulders of giants because uh, Jim, Pete, and Bill did a lot to lay a solid foundation for us as a firm. Uh, then the book really showcases projects uh, that have happened really in the last uh, couple of decades. Um, and so we show a number of projects in various uh, what we call market sectors or studios uh, ranging from higher education to cultural projects to urban architecture to interiors and hospitality to a range of the types of work that we do. Randy, uh, when you look in the book, you're going to see places like the Valentine, the Fabergé and Russian Decorative Arts Galleries at VMFA. These are not small projects, even Lewis Skinner Botanical Garden. We've just been very blessed, Bill. We've worked with some of the Richmond's um, most wonderful and, and exciting institutions in helping to, uh, you know, sort of tell the story of that institution to preserve the the character of some of these places that we love. 
like uh, Virginia Center for History and Culture. We've worked with them on a number of phases of evolution of that institution as it has grown and changed over the years, um, becoming the Center for Virginia's History. And um, that uh, has been a, just a one example of places where we've been able to just work collaboratively and, and uh, feel very, very blessed and fortunate to have worked with some of Richmond's uh, finest uh, institutions. Randy, thanks for coming on with us for a moment, and uh, thanks for all you're doing, and I can't wait to see the book and looking forward to it, and uh, keep up the good work. Well, thank you. Thank you, Bill, for this opportunity, and uh, hope people will uh, take advantage of um, grabbing a copy. Hope so. You can find our home magazine on newsstands or subscribe at richmondmagazine.com slash home, and you'll find them on Facebook at Our Home Magazine and on Instagram at Our Home Mag. And get that book. There's more Virginia This Morning coming up next. Bill, wow. that was such an interesting conversation. He was full of knowledge. I loved hearing what you guys had to say. I also love that he said that this book was a labor of love. I'm sure every project they worked on was a labor of love, but to see it all come together in this beautiful coffee table book, it's just great. And you know, it's so interesting, and I guess I learned a lesson there again, is like, um, you know, everything doesn't have to be brand new. Uh, and, and the buildings that, that they saved in the early part of this company's history, and uh, it's, it's I, I couldn't believe some of the things he was saying there, that they were actually gonna tear down some of the most beautiful structures in our town. And, and the fact that, you know, it just didn't occur to people that, you know, you could use this building and update it and save the, the beauty of it. And, uh, and people were willing to do that in a lot of cases. And we're thankful for it. Uh, we had somebody on from VCU Architecture a couple of years ago and a, a, a teacher, an art teacher, actually. And they told us that students come from all over the country just to look at some of the architecture, the old architecture here in Richmond. I believe that. I feel like for people who are visiting for the first time or maybe they move here, they sort of see the city with new eyes. But if you've been here, born here, raised here, I don't want to say, you know, take it for granted. But, you know, when you come to the city and you really see some of the buildings here, it's absolutely beautiful. And, and I can't wait to get that book. If you look around a little bit and, uh, you know, stop and smell the roses, as they say, and, and open your <laughs> eyes, you're going to see some wonderful stuff around Richmond, Virginia. And uh, Glave and Holmes did a lot to preserve that. We thank them very much. I'm looking forward to the book, too. Coming up, we're going to tell you how you can get a great deal on a pair of eyeglasses and hope to see you on the other side in three minutes. <laughs>